Hi, I'm Matt Johnson, creator of the Johnson Light Show. I've received a lot of emails and comments from people who are interested in some of the elements and technology that we use in our show. I've put together this behind the scenes tour to give you a brief idea of some of those things that people are interested in and that I commonly get asked questions about. If you're interested in building any of these elements, take a look at some of the other videos I've posted on our YouTube channel on how to build elements for an outdoor Christmas light show. I'm sure you'll notice that we do not have a traditional Christmas show. There are no inflatables or blow molds. We don't use traditional Christmas music. Everything is custom. We hand built the elements and the soundtrack is compiled from our own mixes of dubstep, hip hop and electronic dance music. So I will now take you on a brief tour and a walk around around our yard to show you some of my favorite elements and hopefully you'll enjoy this process. One of the unique aspects of our light show is the precision in which all of the lights are evenly spaced and aligned. Nowhere is this more predominant than along the hedges. You'll notice on these rails along our hedges we've created an aluminum channel that has holes that space out the pixels to keep them precisely in the right locations. We've created these rails and put them not only on the hedges but also on the roof line and along the edges of the house to make sure that everything is precise and that it's all located and it's all symmetrical. Another key element in our light show are the leaping light arches. These light arches were created from scratch using a type of tubing called high density polyethylene or HDPE. If you're interested in learning how to build these, which can be done for about $30 a piece, then take a look at one of the videos I have posted on my YouTube channel called How to Build a Leaping Light Arch. It's part of a three video series on building your own elements for an outdoor Christmas light display. One of the more popular elements in our light show are the pixel trees. We have a total of six trees, three on each side of the yard. The trees are completely hand fabricated using materials that are available at both Home Depot or Lowe's. If you're interested on how to build one of these trees, which can be done for about $25 each, then take a look at my video on how to build a pixel tree. It's part of the three part series that I created on building your own elements for an outdoor Christmas light show. One of the new elements that we added this year in 2014 are the pixels that go vertically along the brick at various locations of the house. These pixels here are all evenly spaced and mounted to a rail which makes them easy to put up and take down. This here is one of the signature elements in our light show. We do a lot of very unique effects including countdowns and different kinds of spins with these. They're shutters that we've created into seven segment displays. The next element is the pixel matrix. This is new this year and if you're interested in learning how to build this, check out my video on how to build a pixel matrix. It's a three part series on building a leaping light arch, a pixel matrix, and a pixel tree. One of the new features that we added in 2014 is a second roof line. You'll see that the lights are mounted on a rail system that puts them just above the level of the shingles. We have the lower lights that are mounted below and behind the fascia board which allows them to be up year round. All I need to do is unscrew the diffusers and they're hidden behind the fascia board. One of the only elements in our show that still uses traditional LED lights are the wreaths. You'll notice that these lights are, they look a little bit different than the traditional pixels and next year we're planning to get rid of those completely and replace them with pixels. One of the new effects that we added in our 2014 show is a lot of outlines that go vertically on the brick of our house. You'll notice along the columns, outlining the columns, we have pixels mounted on their same kind of rail system that we showed you on the corner of the house. This allows them to be very evenly spaced, straight, and precise. We also added brow lights along the brick in each of the window coves. So this is where the brains of the entire light show resides. It's in this small black box over here. It's not controlled with a computer like most light shows, but it's instead controlled by what's called a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a small circuit board. It's a single board computer and it is powerful enough to run our entire light show. The next thing that we have over here is the FM transmitter. 
This is what takes the music that's generated within the Raspberry Pi and broadcasts it out to people's car stereos. Right here you will see the mixer. The mixer is used to basically create a more balanced audio output as it goes to the FM transmitter to help from overpowering or overdriving people's car stereos. These two gray boxes here are controllers for different uh, lights. This controller is set up to run the pixel matrix that's on the garage. This controller down here is set up for running the analog or the traditional LED lights such as the snowflakes and the Christmas wreaths. So I wanted to explain in a little bit more detail the specific components and types of electronics that go into the creation of my light show. The fundamental element of everything I have is the pixel. And in my show I use four different kinds of pixels. The first type is called a bullet pixel. The second is a square pixel. The third is a technicolor pixel. And the last one is a surface mounted board pixel. The difference between these is strictly in the form factor and how it's used to mount. The electronics within each of them are the exact same. They all are running 12 volts and they're all running a chip called the WS2811. So unlike traditional Christmas lights, pixels require a controller to run. The controllers that I use in my show are the SAN Devices E682. This controller is a network controller, which means that everything that it broadcasts originates on Ethernet network. This means you can use a computer, or in my case, a Raspberry Pi, to send the signal to the controller that tells the lights what to do. On the controller, there are 16 different ports. Each of these ports can handle up to 170 pixels. And each pixel has a circuit board inside that allows it to communicate with the controller. You can think of it as a pixel is like a computer on a network. And this is the main server for that network. This controller can tell each pixel individually what intensity and what color to be at any given time. Unlike traditional Christmas lights, which have to be controlled in a complete string, it allows you to do effects and have different types of uh, elements than what you would normally see in a standard Christmas light show. The other thing about the controller is that it allows you to control a huge amount of pixels with a lot fewer wires and a lot less electricity than previously done in other Christmas shows. One of the most surprising things that people find out about our show is that the power consumption used by the entire light show is equal to half that of when you use a regular hair dryer. I have six of these controllers to control our entire light show. They're strategically placed throughout the, the yard and in the attic near whatever they are controlling. Each box I've custom fabricated for a specific purpose. You can see this box here has two power supplies. These power supplies generate a 12 volt power that goes to the controller to power the pixels. Each power supply handles half of the outputs on the controller. The controller that I'm using is a SAN Devices E682. It comes as a kit. You have to solder it and put it together, or you can buy it already put together. But it works very well and is a proven design. In order to keep the heat down, I put a standard PC fan along with a thermistor to control and regulate the temperature inside the power box. The last component that I wanted to showcase for you is the show player. The show player is just a fancy name for the computer that runs the entire light show. Traditionally, you would find a PC or some other large server that runs the light show. 
This year I've implemented a lot of new technology that allows me to run the entire show on this one single board computer. It's called a Raspberry Pi and was originally developed by an engineer at Cambridge in England. It's only $35 and I'm able to actually control more channels faster and with less network overhead than using a traditional PC. Perhaps the most impressive part of this whole setup is the fact that our entire light show, all the programming, and then operating system are all stored on this one small micro SD card. If this card gets lost, goes away, our entire light show goes away. So with these basic components, the controller, the player, and the software, this is the entire brains of the light show. You have the pixels that connect to the controller. You have the controller that communicates with the player over the standard Ethernet network. And then you have the software that you've written in a sequencing program. The one I use is Vixen 3. And together this creates everything that you need to create a light show. Our light show uses six of these boards. Each of the boards is connected to a 12 volt power supply which powers the, not only the lights, but also the controller. And each of the controllers connect to each other and to the primary show player using a standard Ethernet cable that you'd find in a home network. I hope you've enjoyed this tour, and if you have any questions or comments, please post them below or send me an email, or visit our website at johnsonlightshow.com. And remember, you too can build any of these elements, and many of them can be built for under $30. If you're interested in building it, please see my three video series on how to build your own elements for an outdoor Christmas light show. Thanks again.